You are going to be presenting the poet Rumi as part of the library's initiative to introduce people to some of the great works of Islamic literature. Tell us, who was Rumi? And what do you think is the most helpful introduction to his poetry? Well, Rumi was born on September 30th, 1207 in Afghanistan, which at that time was part of the Persian Empire. His name, which is spelled R-U-M-I, means from Roman Anatolia. His family emigrated from Afghanistan to Konya, Turkey, when Rumi was quite young, just a little boy. His father was a theologian, a jurist, and a mystic. At his father's death, Rumi took over as sheikh in the dervish community. Now, by dervish, do you mean the whirling dervishes who spin themselves into an ecstatic state? Exactly. Now that's one of the things that dervishes are known for. Basically, a dervish is a Sufi Muslim religious man. Traditionally, only men can be whirling dervishes, but that is beginning to change, I've found. Think of the Sufis as an aspect of Islam. In our time, we hear much about the Sunnis and the Shiites. The Sufis might be considered a fringe sect because they are mostly ascetics and devoted to the spiritual life, they are not known for holding any sort of political power. Therefore, they are not known for starting any wars. Okay, um, that's who Rumi is. 13th century poet. Now this is, now is this 13th century poet someone that followers of Islam still read and respect? Absolutely. Um, there is a shrine where he is buried in Konya, Turkey, and people flock there to pay their respects. His poetry is well known and loved. A friend of mine who recently traveled to Turkey told me that she witnessed a huge crowd around his tomb. The atmosphere within the sanctuary was solemn and reverent. She told me the Sufi community treats Rumi like a saint. Wow. Now, if you want, if people want to get familiar with this Sufi poet, what book do you recommend? Uh, the book that I've got right here. For a great introduction to Rumi, I recommend The Essential Rumi, translations by Coleman Barks. It's the new expanded edition, and it comes as a paperback. And why do you recommend this particular book? This particular book is very special, I think, because Coleman Barks has been working with the poetry of Rumi for years. He knows the poems deeply. He writes a terrific introduction that gets the reader acquainted with the book. The structure is reader-friendly. He has identified certain themes in Rumi's work, and he will say something like, emptiness and silence, and then he will talk in about a paragraph about that theme, and then provide you with um, four or five poems to illustrate the theme. Now would you tell us about one of the themes and perhaps read one of the illustrative poems? I would love to. One of the themes is spring, which I think is especially appropriate for us these days. Yes. For Rumi, as for many of us, spring is when ecstasy seems the natural way to be. For Sufis, spring is attunement meaning they become in tune with the natural world, being attuned to existence and thus to God. In Rumi's poems about spring, there is no urgency about what gets said or not. And let me just give you a brief excerpt from a poem that Coleman Barks calls, Not a Day on Any Calendar. Spring, and everything outside is growing even the tall cypress tree. We must not leave this place. Around the lip of the cup we share these words, my life is not mine. If someone were to play music, it would have to be very sweet. We're drinking wine, but not through lips. We're sleeping it off, but not in bed. Rub the cup across your forehead that this day is outside living and dying. 
Thank you, Claire. We are looking forward to your presentation on May 1st at 11 a.m. Um, this presentation is free and open to the public like all library programs, and we hope a lot of people watching this video can join us. Thank you, Kelly.